Normally I'm not the uh, best speaker, but uh, that speaking is never really one of my strengths, but uh, it's something I grow with in practice, just like I was practicing my handstands. And I believe learning any new skills, anything you're passionate about, you will have to give it a try until you get it. And uh, to be honest, it took me many times to get this handstand. I fall in my face, I fall in my shoulders, I fall in my back. It took me very uh, too many falls to I stand in a very confident way to win. And today, I am standing on earth. This is why I am some coming with barefoot. But at the same time, I'm standing with what I believe in, that feeling earth meant as all. I'll give you a small story about my handstand and how it evolved this much as a concept of art, but at the same time, a concept of fitness. Because I believe every human has an artistic side of him, and every human has an athletic side of him. The problem becomes when we define only one side. We kind of having the other side of us in the denied. Therefore, our full potential as a human died with us somewhere, somehow. And I choose the handstand as a movement to symbolize that. Art is about the concept that sends a message, and the handstand itself was a tool to me to bring attention. And with that, I use that attention to send a message which is basically seeing the world from a different view and promoting peace because it helped me to break through many different cultures. This is what happens. At this current moment, I have traveled 50 countries and I have handstand cities, 70 cities. And all these places, the handstand to me formed as a mechanism of collaboration with different countries from different places around the world and to have something together from that place as a one as a one project that promotes collective work. So the handstand itself, when I came to it, of course, all of us probably are having some jobs, and some of us are also students, and spending so many hours in these places. And what I find is very interesting is we are spending so many times so many times invested in ourselves, in our education, and our character development, but at the same time, for some reason, in this system, our emotions are in denial. And as today, I'm talking to you guys about the handstand mission that I'm having at the same time, the environment that I'm trying to stand for, I find out we are having two problems. The first problem is our understanding of what crisis is. Crisis is a problem that doesn't support our idea and we choose to keep it in denial. Therefore, the problem grows, 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 and suddenly the crisis happens. I'm not going to tell you that the Amazon is burning. I'm not going to tell you that there are some plastic violence happening in the Pacific Ocean. I'm not going to tell you that in Lebanon, in Syria, at this current moment, there is a heat wave and there's lots of fire because of this, and all of this related to the environment and global warming problems. I'm not going to tell you at some point the world face economic crisis too. These are all crises. But we have to understand that we are part of this problem because we kept these problems in denial until they grow to become a crisis. And this is, this is the problem. And as I'm traveling and I'm seeing these problems, and it's, and it's also a personal growth to me. I am growing and I'm seeing what's happening was around me, going to a different country, going to a different culture, going to different systems, going of a better understanding of something how they work. But some of, some of the things I thought they were wrong and they were right. Exactly different perceptions as well. All of these elements opened my eyes to one thing, which was very interesting. Although I have met many educated people, this one thing was civilization. I didn't realize this until I met a few people. To understand their idea of civilization is a human above the environment. Now this is very important. If civilization for some is human above the environment, any idea you can enforce on that that's above the environment, you are promoting discrimination, then you are promoting conflict of interest. 
And I believe the real civilization is not to be part of the environment. And to be part of the environment, you're promoting love and you're promoting compassion. But you see, in this very current moment, we are living in an unbalanced system that drives the extreme to everyone around us to be valued as a number. Where the emotions have no value, you are just a number. You are what your bank salary is. You are what your bank account is. You are what your social media followers is. But you are never complete human because your emotions are also right. This is this has become a problem. We go in the world trying to make money, working for these crazy hours. We're losing our family connection. We're losing our our beloved people connection. We can't spend our off time because we are linked to some number that we have to hit. We are linked to all these elements, and all our emotional needs have no space. Therefore, as a consequence, it's what happened: depression, anxiety, anger, the community trying to understand the soul's puzzle. But the puzzle is very clear. I believe we have reinforced some ideas about the environment around us, and I believe. Earth is one of the very important things to reinforce us and as Earth being all the time to reinforce, but it was never really mentioned the reinforced properly because Earth was always in denial until we had to hear about maybe in the last few years about climate change. And I believe that climate change could be any constant to it. In it myself, at least I I I I start to hear about it more likely at the grip. But Climate change becomes a problem because it was an Indian eyes, and our environment was an Indian eye at some point, which is ever was an Indian eye. And then it becomes a crisis, and all this one has mentioned earlier, it then becomes a problem that's hard to ignore. Our emotions become an Indian eyes, and then you can see a revolution from other countries simply because they are trapped and they are fighting a solution. From an individual level, we are making a lot of emotional sacrifice, sacrificing, sacrificing. And those sacrifices we do, we are losing our own human being, and we end up being human doings. We are simply robots. We are becoming a robot. What is the solution? The solution takes it takes trying for many times. The solution takes to acknowledge and to understand. And you have to be aware that your emotions are they valued or not? Not all the ideas. And when I say ideas, I mean religion. It could be country. It could be organization. These are all ideas. All, all these ideologies are not really aligning up with your emotional direction, with your emotional energy. That means you have no human value. You're only a robot, and it's only a matter of time of a system of things like this going to crash. Skills. No wonder why many skillful people are really growing in such a in such a time. You will find many successful musicians, many successful poets, many successful artists, many successful uh, concert builders. But all that I have mentioned here are people coming from the background of art. I believe the world now is when it needs more people like having a background of art because they have the power to build a concert where you can really interact with human emotional value, the what values we have now as a mechanic of values. We have to remember that we are not robots and we are biological creatures. We think, we feel, we do. But how many of us in this room actually have sacrificed their feelings to what the right thing is to grow? And this is and this is this is to me a scary one. So again as a, I'm traveling with different countries and I'm trying to see what is the most valuable place to go at the moment, what's the difference, the challenges they go to, what is the best place to go to, what are every place, if we realize this one, we will be also enforcing this as well. Earth connects us all. If Earth managed to connect me with a wall, if Earth managed to connect me with any rock in front of me, if Earth managed to connect me with a tree, I'm sure 
Earth will have no problems to connect me with any race. And with this kind of thinking, here if we are in the right approach of civilization, you know, in this situation, our civilization is about compassion and it's about love, and we have created the platform for all of us to be together. The Hansel journey as I started, and I covered all of that, and I come to realization of what's happening and what we should do. Of course, based on social media, social media and social worlds have become a window where everyone can express their emotions. It becomes like a window where nobody can tell you, you cannot do that. It's like freedom and space where you can post everything else. And it's kind of neutralized things, but also at the same time, it affected emotionally and the mental health of other things. I use the influence of the Einstein and my understanding to after all this realization to start a movement called Wood Green as a space where people can use their emotions and to invest their emotions and to create a concept to send a message about the environment and how we can promote the environment. And what I realize here is we have three kind of people. People who have no skills but they are highly patient and they say People who are high in skills, but no education, they sing. People who have education and skills, but they have a purpose, they grow. And I decided to keep this as a grow place for them. And the book really became the little community of going to do that. So when they asked me what they want to do with the book read and what I want to do with my own community, I told them it's all about sharing love information. It's not a pressure war, it's not a war where you're going to be feeling it's a commitment. No, it's a space as how you express yourself in social media. It's a space where you can also express yourself what you should do. But the only difference here, we are having a message, we are connecting it to the environment itself. However, going more further, of course, climate change came, and some of us, well, some of the leaders of the world, Climate change could be attended, and some climate change is a fact. Some of the leaders, not originally named, they do not approve of climate change for some certain reasons. But this is the core of solving the problem. You have to identify a problem to solve it before it becomes a bigger crisis. But if you go down and you understand why is that denying is happening, all that denying is happening. Simply because it not support that person or that person's idea. And the idea, if it becomes the most environment, again, it becomes creating conflicts of interest and problems around it. Now, at the moment, what I am doing as a person, and I'm actually targeting many of you, I'm trying, for example, and create a leadership model by example. Hoping that you can get more skills with a more purpose to their message and to make a change in this world. And the only way by doing this is by taking action and coming down and using and investing skills. And those skills are not to be expected paid by money or anything like that. It has to come from their hearts. And if they want to bring something like this from their hearts, it has to be volunteering. And volunteerism is one of the weaknesses that we have now in our society. However, if I will leave you, I will leave you now for the talk. I will leave you guys with two questions. First question is, how civilized we are? Are we part of the environment? Are we part of the environment? The second question is, is our ideas made us to amplify or, or deny other ideas as well? Are we part of Earth? Are we? Thank you very much.